Hello scientists, it's scientist Renee back with you. Today we are doing lesson 3.3 in Waves, Energy, and Information, and we're talking about how sounds can differ. And you probably recognize that because we've been talking about how sounds can be different for the past couple lessons. First thing that we're gonna do is describing sounds and waveforms. Now, I remember that word waveforms that we talked about. That was like that squiggly line. And you know what? I think I saw a waveform on this first slide. So what are a few things that we've learned about the ways that sounds can be different from one another? Take a second and either write down some of your ideas or tell somebody in your house. You can pause the video while you do that, and I'll see you in a second. Now, you probably remembered that we know that sounds can have different volumes, and we know that sounds can have different pitches. And that does different things to the waveform. And so this chart lists some of the words we've been using to describe a sound and what the waveform for that sound looks like. So, you know what, let's look at each of these a little bit closer. So the first one, volume, loud or quiet. So I can do a loud clap or I can do a quiet clap. Now those two different claps, there's actually different waves happening. So when I do that loud clap, the height of that waveform is a lot higher than when I do a quiet clap. So those two sounds are different because their volumes are different and the waveform is actually different too. That waveform would be taller if the volume was greater or shorter if the volume was lower. Now let's talk about pitch, which is what we talked about in our last lesson. So if I am talking to a dog, sometimes I notice that the pitch of my voice changes and I might say, hi, Dougie, hi, Dougie. Or if I was gonna change the pitch, I could also say, hi, Dougie, hi, Dougie. And those wavelengths would look different too. So when I say, hi, Dougie, I want you to picture in your brain, what do those waveforms look like? Is it different than when I say, hi, Dougie? So think about, the pitch is about the wavelength. It's how squished together, how far apart those wavelengths are. So when I say, hi, Dougie, those waves are a lot closer than when I say, hi, Dougie. And so the sample waveforms on this chart help us remember what amplitude and wavelength mean. And with a little bit of practice, you are gonna know these right away. Now, we're actually gonna go back into a reading that we've done before, or rather a reading from a book that we've done before. So we're gonna use our reference book again. We're gonna read two sections of the book that contain information about both amplitude, volume, and wavelength, pitch. And remember that scientists read reference books and other informational texts for particular purposes. So our purpose, we're marine scientists. So our purpose for reading is to figure out how sounds can be different from one another so that we can determine how dolphin calves know when their mothers are calling to them and just them. So we're gonna read pages six through seven and pages 34 through 35 in Patterns in Communication. All right, so let's bring this a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna to read to you pages six and seven. Information that travels as waves. For communication to happen, information has to pass from an animal to one or more other animals. Sometimes the information passed directly through touch, but other times it has to travel across a distance. In most cases, that information travels as waves. When you think of a wave, you might think of a wave in the ocean or a lake. This is one type of wave, but there are many other kinds of waves, such as light waves, sound waves, and waves that carry electrical signals. 
A wave is a pattern of motion and can carry information from one place to another. I see a bunch of waveforms here. And look, there are, some of them have different amplitudes. And it also seems like some of them have different wavelengths. These look like they have a much higher pitch because they're close together than these. They also, these look like they have a higher volume than these because they're taller. They have a taller amplitude. When a dog wags its tail, it is sending a visual signal to other dogs. That visual signal travels as light waves. When a dolphin makes a sound, that sound travels as sound waves. When you send a text message, that signal travels as waves that carry electrical signals. All these types of waves may seem very different. However, different types of waves have some things in common. One characteristic of all waves is wavelength. Ooh, we know that word. Wavelength is the distance from the peak of one wave to the next peak, as shown in the waveform below. So we see one peak, the other, and so that is our wavelength from peak to peak. A waveform is a curved line that shows the pattern of a wave. Waves with shorter wavelengths have shorter distances between the peaks. Waves with longer wavelengths have longer distances between the peaks. In a sound wave, the shorter the wavelength, the higher the pitch, and the longer the wavelength, the lower the pitch. Another feature of all waves is amplitude. Amplitude is related to how much energy the wave has. In a sound wave, the amplitude of a wave affects its volume, or how loud the sound is. The louder a sound is, the more energy the wave has, and the bigger the wave's amplitude. Quieter sounds have less energy and smaller amplitudes. In the waveform below, you can see how amplitude is represented. So the caption says, Let's move that over. In a waveform, amplitude is represented by the height of a wave, measured from the middle, see the middle, to the peak. And now we've gone to pages 34 to 35. Treehopper communication. Treehoppers are small insects that live on the stems of plants in many parts of the world. Often, many treehoppers live on the same plant. To communicate, the treehoppers shake their bodies. The shaking creates patterns of vibrations that travel through their legs and into the plant stem in all directions. Other tree hoppers on that plant can sense the vibration through their own legs. Different patterns of vibrations send different messages. Some tree hoppers use vibrations to send a signal to other tree hoppers when a predator is nearby. Tree hoppers also communicate to find mates. Vibrations cause sound waves. So when tree hoppers vibrate, they make sounds. However, to a person, the tree hoppers would sound completely silent. That's weird. That's weird that other tree hoppers can hear them, but humans can't. Tree hopper vibrations travel only through the plant. Almost no sound travels through the air. So the vibrations do not make sound that, other, that the human ear can hear. Oh, all right. Still, these vibrations are sound waves. Man, I just learned something cool about sound waves. And so in our caption, we see tree hoppers communicate by shaking their bodies and sending vibrations through plant stems. So I'm visualizing this guy shaking his body and then that vibration going through that stem. These vibrations are sound waves, even though humans can't hear them. This group of tree hoppers may be sending each other signals that people can't hear. It's a really cool thing to think about on how all these different ways that animals have to communicate that are different from the way humans do. Now on the next page, scientists use special tools to measure the sound waves and turn them into sound recordings that humans can hear. By doing this, scientists have found that tree hoppers make many different sounds. Tree hopper sounds can differ in amplitude. The amplitude of a tree hopper's sound depends on what kind of plant stem the tree hopper is sitting on. The amplitude of the sound is bigger on hard plants, which means the sound produced is louder. Hard plants, I guess I'm picturing like a tree, like a tree trunk. The amplitude of the sound is smaller on wet or soft plants, which means the sound is softer. 
When I hear wet or soft plants, I think of almost like a grass or um, you know, some plant that I can kind of spring back and forth with my hands. Tree hopper sounds can differ in pitch too. Some tree hopper species make sounds that are pure tones. Hmm, I don't know what that means. Oh, a pure tone is a sound that has one constant pitch. Other tree hopper species, like most other organisms in the world, make more complex sounds. For example, some tree hoppers make a series of clicking sounds that change in pitch. Complex sounds can be made up of many pure tones together with different pitches happening all at once. That's pretty cool. So we've, we've wrapped up our reading. The next thing that we're gonna do is some sorting on the Amplify platform. So we're going to stop the video here and start a new video. I will see you very soon. Hey everyone, welcome back. So we just did a reading from our reference book and we just heard some examples of animals using or having different pitches and different amplitudes in the waveforms that they make. So we're gonna do some practice with sorting sounds now. In Amplify, we have something called the sorting tool. In the sorting tool, there's, there's several of them and we can actually drag things around that's gonna help us show our ideas about how sounds are different. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna sort images to show how volume and amplitude are related. We're gonna decide which images show loud sounds and which show quiet sounds. We're gonna place each image in the correct column. So I'm gonna to go to the sorting tool and it looks like I have this side is loud sounds. This side is quiet sounds. And I've got some different pictures here. First thing I'm gonna do is click and look at the instructions. The instructions tell me, look at each image and decide whether it represents a loud sound or a quiet sound. Do. Images with purple dots go in the purple spaces and images with red dots go in the red spaces. We're going to place each image in the correct column. Well, I'll tell you what. It looks like we have low volume level, sound wave, high volume level, sound wave. Hmm. So this first one, low volume level, it has a pink dot, so it's either gonna go here or here. Take a second and say out loud if you think it should go in loud sound or quiet sound. I bet you are telling me that this should go in the quiet sound because it's a low volume level. If the volume is low on the TV, it's really quiet. And you know what? Let's look at this one next because it's a pink dot. High volume level. Well, if the TV is on high, I think that's gonna be a loud sound. Now we have two different images of waveforms. So I've got a taller image and a shorter image, different amplitudes. I want you to say out loud where you think I should put this one. I bet you got this right and I bet you said quiet sound for this. Because if I look at these two images, I've got very low amplitude here and we know that low amplitude happens when it's a quiet sound. I've got higher amplitude here and we know that higher amplitude, we saw this in the simulation, is a louder sound. So we just did that for volume. Now we're going to do that for wavelength and pitch. So let's go back into, let's go into, rather, the other sorting tool. Again, let's read the instructions. The instructions say, look at each image and decide whether it represents a sound with a low pitch or a sound with a high pitch. Do. Images with purple dots go in the purple spaces and images with red dots go in the red spaces. Place each, place each image in the correct column. Now, we heard a bunch of different instruments in the simulation. So we have a flute, 
and a double bass, two different instruments. One of those instruments has a low pitch and one has a high pitch. Take a second and then I want you to say out loud which one, flute or double bass, should go in the low pitch. Awesome. I bet you said double bass. I remember in The Sim, that almost had like a growl sound. It was super low. And the flute is a really high pitched instrument. It has a very high sound to it. So the next thing that we need to do is decide which one of these waveforms should go in which box. So one of these shows something with a high pitch and one shows something with a low pitch. The amplitude's the same, so the volume's the same. So I want you to tell me, should this one go in the low pitch or the high pitch? Say out loud. So hopefully you're able to tell me this goes in the high pitch and this goes in the low pitch. I know this because high pitch sounds have the waveforms close together and low pitch sounds have the waveforms further apart. And that's what we saw here. So let's go back to our investigation question. What are some ways sounds can be different from one another? Well, I know we talked about volume and pitch. Those are two ways that sounds can be different from each other. Now, what makes the volume of sounds different? You got a piece of paper, just write down in a couple words. What, it, what is it about the waveform that makes the volume different? And then I'm gonna have you do the same thing. What makes the pitch of sounds different? On a piece of paper, Write down just in a couple words, what makes the pitch of a, or what about the waveform makes the pitch different? And come back when you are ready. Now, this is gonna be a great way to check your answers that you just wrote down. So we're gonna look at the arrow that shows amplitude in this diagram. How would you place an arrow? Oh, I'm actually gonna pause there. Look at the arrow that shows amplitude. I see this orange arrow here. It's showing from the middle of the wave to the crest, the peak. And then the question is, how would you place an arrow that shows wavelength? Okay, I know that wavelength is the distance from one peak to another. So that makes me think I could draw an arrow like from this peak to that peak. And if you see here, that's exactly what has been drawn. I have an arrow from this peak to the next peak. So the diagram has changed because the wavelength arrow has appeared. It shows the distance between two wave peaks. This is my amplify arrow. I'm sorry, amplitude arrow. This is my pitch arrow. How loud it is, what the pitch is. And that brings us to two important ideas. So one, when sound waves have different amplitudes, we hear sounds with different volumes. When sounds have different wavelengths, we hear sounds with different pitches. Now we're gonna do one last thing. So you need a piece of paper and you need a pencil. We are going to listen to a really fun sound, and you're gonna use what you know about amplitude and wavelength to first visualize what the waveform for the sound looks like, and then draw what you visualized. So I'm gonna play this clip twice. So listen all, um, I'm gonna ask you to listen carefully. The first thing I want you to do is just close your eyes and listen, and then I want you to visualize what would the sound wave look like we're going to draw it after, but this first time, just listen, please, and visualize. Man, that's a pretty 
pretty weird sound. Now, visualize in your head. That sound had some different volumes, and that sound had some different pitches. What would change about the waveform? I'm gonna play it one more time, and then I'm going to have you pause the video so you can actually draw your waveform. Now, have out your piece of paper. I'll play it one more time, and then you're gonna pause and draw. All right, please pause the video, and I want you to draw what you think that waveform sounds like. When you're ready, press play, and we'll come back together. So I bet your teacher is excited to see the waveform that you drew. And you probably took what you knew about pitch and volume, and you thought like, oh, I heard the sound change in its pitch, and I heard it change in its volume, and I showed those somehow in my waveform. Now I'm gonna show you my waveform, which is not necessarily the best way to draw this. But here's my waveform. So a couple things I heard. I heard the sound get louder. I heard it go woo, woo. And so I drew my waves getting bigger amplitude. And then I heard the sound get quieter. So I drew a smaller amplitude. Then I heard it get louder again. So I drew a bigger amplitude and quieter again. Now the other thing that I saw was I heard the pitch change. We heard like woo, woo, woo. And when it gets that higher pitch, I drew my waves closer together. So that's woo, 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 woo. Yours might have looked the same as mine. It might have looked different, and that's both okay. Scientists uh, all have different ways of modeling. So remember, we've been investigating this question, why are some sounds different from other sounds? We're gonna keep investigating both this idea and how does the dolphin calf know that its mother is calling it as we keep going in this chapter. I'll see you soon and I hope you have a great day.